What is up YouTube, Adric High here with episode 7, and uh, today we're actually going to be going up to Chicago, going to be playing the great game of Pot Limit Omaha, or 2-5 No Limit Hold'em. So currently we're actually running late, it's 3 o'clock in the afternoon, it's like a 2 hour drive to get up there, plus I work at 10.30 in the morning tomorrow, so uh, we need to hit the road. Uh, but just to give you a little quick update, apologize for not putting much out lately. Um, I just put the Vegas vlog out uh, yesterday, actually. And uh, pretty much the reason I haven't been putting vlogs out is uh, I lost my license and I basically went busto. So for the, for the last couple of months, um, I've just been on a huge, huge, huge downswing. And then you basically got to see me go broke in my Vegas vlog. It's about a month after that. Uh, we've recouped a lot of our losses. We've rebuilt a small bankroll. We're gonna take a few buy-ins up with us up to Chicago and uh, See what fun we can get into see if we can make some money up there But uh, we need to hit the road because like I said, it's 3 o'clock and I got to work at 10 30 in the morning tomorrow So that doesn't leave a whole lot of time. So uh, we're gonna get up there. We're gonna hurry up and get a seat and let's get it from the fuckery but that, is, that was that horrible traffic so uh, we should be there in about 15 20 minutes gonna hop in the game right now the lists are short so we're gonna buy in probably get in for about four or five hundred not really sure what we're gonna do yet what our strategies are we're gonna check out the tables if we get there we're gonna scope it out hopefully we're gonna make some money and run it up let's get it guys so I intentionally really wanted to go to the Harris today but um I don't know, the, the buy-in there is big stack, so it plays a little big, it's not uncommon for that game to have like 30,000 on the table honestly, it's probably the biggest 1-2 PLO game in the country, mostly because they allow 5x button straddles, so you can button straddle for 25 and you can buy in for the big stack, so you'll have PL PLO nerds come there, bust out the crown royal bags, full of purples and yellows and blacks, and they'll just buy in for like 5 10,000, no problem. Uh, the game just plays super, super big. It's not common for every hand to go three bet, pot, pot. You know, it's it's pretty sick. You got to run good to make a lot of money. But if you do run good, you're gonna make a lot of money. Uh, instead, I decided to go to the Horseshoe, which um, they have a $500 buy-in max one-two PLO game with a $5 bring-in. It's a little more uh, less crazy and a little more healthy for my bankroll. Even though my bankroll is probably not even big enough to play one-two five PLO, uh, it's our day off, so why not? I hope you enjoyed that somewhat dramatic entrance there. So uh, we finally made it. We're gonna go in there, we put our names on the 1-2 PLO list. They do not allow call-ins for 2-5, so we'll most likely get a seat at the PLO game first. All right, let's go.
So we're here in the card room, and this is actually one of my favorite card rooms ever. Uh, I actually like it more than almost any card room in Vegas, to be honest with you. Uh, the action's always good, and um, I don't know, the games are always running. So we're actually first up on the 1-2 PLL list. We're gonna jump in there. Probably gonna buy in for 400, maybe 300, probably 400. Uh, at first, see how it goes, and then we'll just uh, adjust and go from there. sitting around 1200 ish so we're doing pretty all right our table's pretty passive and uh pretty easy actually uh, haven't had any resistance um first hand you may have seen we ended up flopping a set of jacks uh we got a full double there ended up trapping the player with his like pair of aces and gut shot probably something weird i don't know what he had and then um the, a few hands later we ended up getting pocket aces and um ended up turning quad aces against king's school uh, that was a really really good play there or that was a really that was a really really nice hand and um, I ended up losing a uh, about $130 where I had pocket aces and um, got it all in against a guy who shoved with pocket sevens and pocket nines for $120. So we lost that hand, he ended up hitting two sets. And then um, shortly after that, uh, we uh, kind of went on a little roll, just been taking down a few little like $50, $60 pots. So everything's been going pretty well. We're gonna get back in that game and see if we can run it up, and then gonna get some food here in a little bit, because I'm actually kinda hungry. Well, that was kind of uncool. We left the poker room, and we walked to the very top of the parking garage to try to fly the drone, to try to get some drone footage, but they said there's too strong of a, of a magnetic field, so I uh, guess I can't fly it. So, gonna get some food and head back to the table. I actually got moved to the main game, which is a lot deeper, but not necessarily better actually. Um, the people at my old table were, um, the people at my first table were actually really, really passive. Limping a lot, check calling a lot. This table, kind of know what they're doing. So, gonna have to watch ourselves. We've whittled down our stack a little bit. We're only up like six now, so that's all right. Just gotta keep our heads in it. Just taking a break here um, at this little noodle bar. It's actually kind of hidden. Um, it's kind of like right outside the back bar room in the back left. Uh, you wouldn't really know it was here unless someone like took it here, honestly. They don't really advertise it, which makes it kind of cool. But uh, it's a cool little hole in wall spot. Got some Mongolian beef and fried rice. That should hopefully give you through the night. I haven't eaten anything uh, yet today, honestly, so this would be really delicious. They're probably wondering where the hell I am, honestly, but that's all right. We'll get back to the game eventually. Just gotta get refueled. He 
has any boats here at all because he didn't raise me on the flop. And um, he ends up leading for 150, which is just super, super weird. Um, I just didn't put him on a boat at all, but so I called pretty quick. Uh, yeah, that one, he rivered the, he backdoored the boat on me, um, I just didn't see it coming at all, and, uh, yeah, so now we're just chilling right now, uh, up about 200, only have another, like, hour, two hours here, I've got my name on the 510 list, but, uh, I'm not sure if that's gonna come up yet or not. So yeah, got like a two and a half hour drive ahead of us after this, so only have about an hour to an hour and a half, two hours left here. Um, got to work at 10.30 tomorrow. It's been a lot of fun though. Definitely be making more frequent trips up here, especially now that we have our license. And um, it would have been cool to play some 2.5, but uh, I've just been a big, I've been on a um, PLO kick lately. It's a lot more fun to look at four cards than two. Let's go. Uh, we started off up a lot. We actually started off up like $800 and then just went absolutely card dead. Um, picked up a bunch of decent hands and just, we would, you know, we'd pot the flop and fold. We would call a raise on the flop and fold. And um, finally, uh, it's uh, finally just got to like 3.30 in the morning and I was like, well, I got this two and a half hour drive ahead of me and I work at 10.30 in the morning. I probably should head home. So uh, I ended up cashing out the game with $366. So in for four, out with $366, down $24. Not bad at all, we'll take it. Um, on the way out, I actually, um, so I actually cashed in all my reds and switched them out for blacks. And so I told myself that I actually wanted to um, start saving casino chips and not cashing them in. And uh, kind of use that as my poker bankroll. And um, it'll actually kind of uh, force me to play more casino games. Uh, it'll really help my game selection, I think. So I'm gonna try that strategy out. So uh, <clears throat> we're just heading home right now. Big shout out to uh, the Horseshoe in Hammond. One of the best card rooms in the Midwest. Probably the nicest card rooms in the Midwest. Best, best and fastest dealers. Um, all of the players are even really, really nice, really fun. All of the young pros are really fun and uh, easy going to talk to. Um, they are not, um, they're not shy at all about sharing information, you know, um, about sharing, you know, tips and stuff. And uh, they're full of really, really good funny stories. Um, they're all really, really fun to play with. I'm definitely going to come up here way more often and um, try to keep playing their 2-5 uh, No Limit and their 1-2 PLO because there's a lot of money to be made in those games. Um, I just got to stay dedicated, stick to a plan, and uh, keep at it. But I appreciate you guys watching this episode. That's pretty much it. Uh, I got this long ass drive ahead of me and uh, let's just hope I don't fall asleep on the way home. Alright guys, well uh, that's it for episode 7. Thank you very much for watching.